Hello again here, it's Jimmy at O'Reilly's Mobile Mechanics. Come to look at this uh, red Range Rover Vogue here. It's got a DPF issue. Um, it's out of the Range Rover garage. Um, they were unable to do anything with it. And he's had it at another uh, uh, independent garage. And they've said that there's nothing they can do either. Um, the DPF is beyond repair. So I'm just going to have a quick look at it and see if there's something we can do. And I think that there's a few tricks I can show you how we can get this back up and running besides writing off the DPF and spending thousands of pounds on it. Okay, we're just inside. Let's try and get this thing started up. Oh, sorry, press the clutch, of course. Exhaust filter full, visit dealer, uh, which he's already done. Uh, they've refused to uh, do anything with it. And you can see it's got the engine management light on there. Service required as well. Uh, it's done 67,000 miles. So we'll get it plugged in on diagnostics and see what we're looking at. Okay, here's some of the details here. It's the 2016 2, two litre diesel. Just going to press OK on that. I'm going to run a diagnostic scan. So basically, what the customers told me is the garage, Land Rover dealership, and the independent garage have both said that the DPF is beyond cleaning uh, because it says on the scan that uh, it's too full to start a, a regeneration process or start anything else. But uh, we can put a clean through it. Um, sometimes when you do a clean on most of these newer cars, some cars, like you've seen in our other videos, will give you like a live feed showing you the, the percentage dropping after we've flushed it. But some of these, once they've got so so much, uh, once it's triggered off this uh, warning basically, um, no matter how much cleaning you do, it will not show up on the diagnostic. It will just stay at that 200% or whatever it's at until you actually reset it. Um, then it will show you the, the um, actual reading going up or down where it should be. But once it's once it's set that warning off, it will be locked in position basically on the percentage. So we're just going through all of the rest of these items. Some of these are not relevant, but we're just going through the full vehicle, just in case there's other modules somewhere where they might have an, an what might seem like an irrelevant fault. But you never know what uh, DPFs, all sorts of other stuff, can trigger off. Uh, you know, the car to go into this uh, sort of non-regeneration mode where the DPF can get clogged. So we'll have a look at the trouble codes and. Okay, so that's in the history. I don't know why someone's not mentioned that before. But hopefully that's just where the other guards was looking at it. Maybe they've unplugged some bits and pieces because it's in the history, it's not present. But they've got a permanent fault there, P2463 uh, zero, 00, and it's a permanent fault for the soot accumulation. So if we try to clear the codes, let's see what happens. Now apparently the other garages have said that the codes are impossible to clear. Now, they might clear temporarily. There you go, we've got one back. And there you go, it's back again. Now it's classed as temporary until you start it up. It'll then go to a permanent fault. So, that's the problem that they're having. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to flush it. And then I'll show you how we can get this fault to clear. Because now that's logged, it's basically saying it's on beyond repair. You can't clear the code until you, you put a new DPF in it. And I'll actually do this bit first, just to um, get to show you. So I'm going to go into the hot functions, or it might be in the service option on this card, depending on where we're at. So DPF. And what I'm going to do is basically tell it that the DPF has has had a new one it's been cleaned it's brand new so it can reset all of the um settings okay now it will tell you to to not to uh, not to do this unless you've actually fitted a new one because it's likely to damage the dpf but i mean if it's beyond repair anyway it's um 
you you're not gonna do anything anything to it. And if you've seen on our other videos with live data, once we've flushed it, even at two hundred and fifty percent we can get them down to almost zero. So here now what this is gonna do is reset the soot mass and the mileage since the last change. Now once we start the car in a minute, obviously the sensors are going to pick up how blocked it is and, it, and it, those readings will increase. But we're going to flush it. This will give us a chance to actually start the car and give it some revs. Otherwise it's going to be in a, in a reduced power mode, it won't rev up. So once we fill it with, with our flushing fluid, we can get full acceleration which is going to is going to push all of that fluid and soot back out. So that's done, that's complete. Turn the ignition off, press OK, turn the ignition back on. Uh, this is going to take a while so we'll just pause it. So that's just finished and brought me back to this menu. Now we'll go back to the diagnosis menu, auto scan. So we're just going to check the engine control module this time. Exit that. I haven't got the uh, I haven't got the engine control module coming up there. So yeah, there we are. Okay, power control module. There you see, pass no fault. And we can go in there, check it to confirm. It's gone. So that will return after a few minutes of driving. But we're going to flush it now. And if need be, we can reset all this again after after the flush. We're just gonna we're just resetting that beforehand just to show you how that can be done. Lift the bonnet up. You can see that they've definitely crammed that engine in there. Engine is raised way above the um, slam panel there. So they, that's why they've raised the bonnet to make it fit. It's the uh, Ingenium engine. Engine cover off there, just down the back. Here we have the DPF pressure sensor, and you've got two tubes, one and two going down to the DPF there. So just down the back here, got a little uh, eight millimeter bolt, just getting that out. And now we can just uh, pull this about a little bit, just gives a little bit of play on it. And uh, we need to access the bigger tube, which is always the one before the DPF. Just get a light on there, which is this one on the left it should be. We just pull the plug off, leave that aside, and see if we can get this. It won't give you much room. They could have made the tubes a little bit longer so you could at least get some slack on them. But we need to open these clips here. I'm going to open this clip. And just because of the position they're in, we're using some of these angled pliers. Now we've got that off, we can just pull the tube out. Okay, so we're using a couple of litres of this Winds DPF cleaner, put it into our dispenser here. And we can get this connected up to that DPF pressure sensor hose using this little connector here that we've got. Okay, so we've just pushed that into there, nice and tug, tugged it tight, and uh, tugged tight. And we're going to pump this up, which will flush the fluid into the DPF. We can see that the air is jumping, so it's almost well, it is empty now. And we'll just pull that out. Now that's all connected back together, we'll let that sit for a few minutes and we'll go back in on our diagnostic machine. So, here's the message that the other cards are getting. If the soot mass is above the upper limit, this function will be will end and you will be instructed to replace the filter. So that's that's where they were coming stuck. Uh, now we've obviously reset that. This will all be okay to go ahead.
We're not going to actually do the uh, regeneration. What we're going to do now is start the vehicle up. And now you can see already there's no warnings because we obviously reset it. But they will return if you don't flush it. So we are flushing the DPF now. And we're going to go outside. We should see a lot of uh, foam and etc. If you've seen some of our videos. Just going to connect our laser pedal depressor. And we'll set the car to around about 2,500 RPM. Give it a couple of full accelerations. And we'll just connect back, back our pedal depressor. So now it's been a few minutes, we've uh, put all the stuff out. We're going to take it for a test drive and see if all is well. What we're going to do now is we're just going to set off a dynamic regeneration just so we can read the uh, soot percentage. So it's saying it's on 1.7, uh, you can see it's dropping there. So we're going to drive it to see if we can get it down any lower. Okay, we're currently down to 0 0.7. I just got a little bit of a close up so you can see that there a little bit better. So we're going to finish up here on that, and that's just telling you there that the soot mass is at an acceptable limit. And that's, that's complete. So now we're going, to, we're going to go back and do some more uh, diagnosis on the map sensor fault that came up before. See if we can find out any issues with that. Pause. Let's go see what we've got here. Hopefully it's not due to DPF, just a little fault. Oh, NOx sensor is a completely separate issue now. Uh, came up with the map sensor before. So now we've got the NOx sensor. That was a temporary fault, so I'm not too sure what that. We'll, re we'll uh, make a record of it and uh, delete the code for now. And uh, let's just, we'll see if it returns or not. Because it showed up the manifold to the manifold pressure sensor to the MAF sensor correlation suggests there's an air leak somewhere so I'm going to put up this smog leak detector see if we've got any leaks that we can find so I'll switch it on now I've removed the air inlet from the air box and I'm going to connect my little machine up here and it's going to push some smoke through if there's a leak down here for instance you'll see the smoke coming out so we've just finished on that smoke test we can't find any leaks coming from anywhere so um, perhaps if those faults return it's going to need a little bit of further investigation but for now we're all done see you in the next video